My name is Mary McGregor. I went to Indiana University for my undergraduate degree and took an internship in Washington, D.C. for a nonprofit advocacy group and was there for several years where I met my husband. And from there, I started the MSW program at VCU doing clinical social work, specializing in trauma at Indiana University. I was working at a camp that was encouraging kids from underserved areas of Indiana to go to college. So we brought them to the campus. And one of my campers disclosed that the reason she wore a large black sweater when it was 80 degrees out was because her father abused her. I built a trust with this girl and mentored her and she was able then to disclose. And it was a really powerful moment for me to come face to face with what kids are experiencing and the kind of abuse and trauma that can inhibit our ability to reach our goals. The area that most of my research and practice has been in is trauma-focused interventions, such as mindfulness-based intervention, trauma-informed, TFCBT, and EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. And this form of treatment is fairly new and progressive, and it's not taught in school. It's been wonderful to be one of the few clinicians in Charlottesville that can do EMDR and then to be able to provide it at a low cost rate at the Women's Initiative. I can offer an intervention that usually is very expensive at a low rate of $5 a session. <laughs> I feel so honored to be sitting with clients and hearing their life experiences, which are sometimes very difficult to hear. And I imagine that when they go through this world carrying this weight, that they don't feel safe enough to share it, or they feel that people can't handle me. I'm a mess, you know? They can't handle my anger or my dissociation. They don't know what to do with me. And just to be able to sit with them, to hear them, validate, and empathize, it feels like I'm sharing a sacred experience with them where I am giving them the opportunity to not be judged and to um, feel accepted. It's an incredibly effective intervention for trauma and for all of these traumatic memories that really shape who we are and how we see ourselves how we hold on to certain patterns and behaviors as a survival instinct and now how this intervention can go back and help dissipate that tension, that anxiety. I've primarily worked in sexual abuse and I go back with people to their traumatic memories which are often fragmented and during the intervention they remember more and more of what happened to them and we form a negative cognition and we work through and process why they feel they're not good enough or they feel like they're trash until there's no more sensation in the body. And then we instill a positive cognition, which is I am good enough or I am worthy. I have a consistent group that has come. We do um, a mindfulness-based meditation in which I lead and then we talk about the experience afterwards. And the group is just 30 minutes long. But what I'm really trying to reinforce is that it just takes five minutes. Self-care, it just takes five minutes to breathe, 10 minutes. I had a fellowship at Fair Girls which is an anti-sex trafficking organization. And one block from the White House is a park. And especially at one o'clock on Sunday evenings, the girls, and they're from all over the world, line up around that block and guys circle around and they pick up a girl. The average age for a girl to be um, starting prostitution is 11 in the United States. We would um, meet girls if they were picked up for prostitution. We would meet them at the jail or at the detention center to talk about their options and what was going on. 
for eight years I have been working in women-focused organizations and I devoted last year to doing more and more research on male sexual assault and abuse. They are not always perpetrators, but they are also victims and survivors of abuse. We know that one in four girls are victims of sexual assault and one in six boys. It's fairly even. It really shifts your perspective there. And I feel more hopeful about mental health services if we can include men into the discussion. I'm looking forward to working with like-minded clinicians with a trauma-informed lens. And I'm looking forward to learning from them and their experiences. I look forward to just developing into a more experienced clinician that is able to quickly assess, access information, and provide the best care for clients. Starting this process of becoming a therapist, becoming a clinician, has been extremely transformational in, in terms of digging into my past experiences, digging into my assumptions, my biases. Don't be afraid to reflect on your own experience in this world. I think that we can learn the most about theory and about our clients and about our own biases the more that we're willing to explore ourselves.